Hi there, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cedric. I am an actor, a filmmaker, a screenwriter, and a YouTube reactor. If you're new here, you should know that today is a very big day for us here, for all the Sedgehogs that have enjoyed BTS content. We are starting the Bangtan universe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's time. This is really exciting. I've heard so many great things. This has been recommended so many times and the first video up uh, has been recommended since I started the channel. So I'm so sorry to all of you that I've neglected so far, but I'm glad that we're here. I'm glad we're doing it. This is very, very exciting. I'm thrilled. I'm really excited. I wanted to say thank you real quick to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for uh, helping me be able to dedicate time to doing this and um, just thank you. That's I'm always so amazed that uh, I even have people over there. So thank you for doing that. That's really, really great of you. Real quick, my guest on my podcast, the All the World podcast, which can be found wherever you get your podcasts, is Amanda Frost. Uh, Amanda is an actor. We are in a movie together called Window with a View. She's really, really great. She shares some awesome techniques on how she gets into character and how she preps for auditions. So check that out wherever you get your podcasts. I wanted to give two quick shout outs. The first shout out is to Casey, the producer of the shoot that I was on last week. Casey is great and she's a huge BTS fan. And that's like a lot of what we talked about on set uh, when we weren't shooting is the two of us would talk about that. And I think uh, a lot of other actors and crew members learned more about BTS than they thought they were going to during that shoot. But we had fun. So Casey, if you're watching this, what's up? Hey, I miss you. You're great. The other shout out uh, that I wanted to do real quick is to Say What Reacts. Say What Reacts is a YouTube channel. They have been very, very supportive of my channel and have given me advice along the way, as well as giving me a guide to work through the Bangtan universe uh, that, you know, they said this, this really functions well as the narrative and being able to fully understand everything that's going on. So thank you. Please go check them out and support them as well. I appreciate uh, the advice. Thank you for the support as well. That's really, really great of you. So please go check them out and support them. The last thing, please don't skip this. This is very important. Uh, a lot of you have been asking what my bias is. And I may or may not tell you at the end of this video. Do not skip ahead. Don't do it. Don't skip ahead. But I might tell you at the end of this video. So just, you know, just to let you know, I feel like we have to be transparent uh, you know, going into this universe, I feel like I should just be honest with you about who it is, you know? So we'll get there. You'll see. You'll see. Okay, here we go. I think I'm just rambling at this point because I'm nervous. I know that I'm, uh, what's the thing from Star Wars? You have taken your first step into a larger world. It's my Ben Kenobi voice. That's good. You've taken your first step into a larger world. This is a, a new thing. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. I missed this. I missed this opening. Big hit. Entertainment. Oh, very washed out. If this is your first time watching this, I do a lot of analysis, so I'll talk through how they shoot it. Great makeup on that. This is very chilled out. I like that. That was nice. Don't like smoking. Is he smoking or is that a lollipop? I'm gonna say it's a lollipop. Most beautiful moment in life, part one. That's the name of the universe, right? I like that flicking the lighter on on the beats, cool. That's 
not good. Okay, there's a lot going on right off the bat here, huh? Interesting that they started out with very washed out shots, very grayscaled shots, almost like there isn't even a color grade on it, uh, which puts you in a space of desaturation. Um, sort of, you understand immediately that something's wrong, that things are, are bland or missing or just sad in general. So that's a really good way to visually represent that. They also show them all in different spaces, which I guess is my understanding that they're all like different plots are happening with each of them. And so that tells us right off the bat, you know, it's, it's similar to a movie, how like the first seven minutes of a movie with multiple characters. I think maybe the most famous example of what I'm thinking of here is Love Actually, where, you know, there's like 15 main characters and they start off by showing like the first 10 minutes of the movie is just showing where each character is in their own space. You kind of have an anchor point for all of them. So that's a really good visual representation of that, as well as showing that they're clearly all in different bad spaces. Uh, they're all coping with whatever's going on in a different way. That's a really cool way to do that. Even the, the cohesion of a uh, being in a bath and playing with fire at the same time, right? Water versus fire. Um, the chipped paint all over the walls and having flower petals. Uh, th there's a lot of interesting dichotomies that they're drawing up visually uh, and metaphorically. So I'm really interested in that. Along with these like very angry lyrics, um, but more upbeat music. So I'm, I'm fascinated. I'm sorry, I hate you, I love you, I hate you. Nice. Cool. Nice. Hmm. You can see that. Okay. So they can all be happy when they're together, I guess. It's kind of their more positive, energized space. Okay, before we get into the next verse, I really quick wanted to point out, you guys have heard me talk before about the, the use of vertical lines in cinematography and how important that is to help us um, understand visually what's happening and have a visual representation and something that's motivated and interesting. So watch throughout, I think, particularly the shot where they're walking down the train tracks. You could see that the, the trains were forming vertical lines for us to follow, and then you had skyscrapers in the background that were completing that. Um, and even in this shot where I paused right here, you've got these lights creating a nice line visually for us to look down. You've got the computer over to the side, this metal thing over here, and then we've got some nice horizontal beams crossing. So even though this music video in particular is less, and I don't mean this is a bad thing, it's less cinematic than some of the others that I've checked out. It's less grand, I guess is a good way to say it. This is meant to look more like we're kind of watching intimate moments of their lives. It's still very carefully choreographed with the camera. It's intentional in its intimacy, which is a really cool way to do it. Okay, I definitely hope he's not smoking now, because that's not good. If he's smoking uh, with gas. It is a lollipop. Woo, okay. Huh. That was pretty. Okay, and now we're on two separate bridges. Interesting. It's a well shot fight scene. Are they all feeling that loss? Oh, 
No! I don't want to just keep seeing people get hurt, but... It's an interesting plot. Uh, such a uh, to cut them being happy in with this scene. God, there's so much happening. What's really going to be annoying with these, and I mean annoying in the best possible way, is that there's not necessarily a cohesive beginning, middle, and end, I'm guessing, to a lot of these videos, because they're meant to tie together. No, there is going to be a, a beginning, middle, and end, and screenwriting, it's a three-act structure, so you have your act one, act two, act three. And I can tell that this has this, I mean, act one was introducing us to everyone, act two was intro to the world, and so it was like, I think J-Hope took all the pills, which would explain why he would fall on the bridge. I think that was him. It's it's going really quickly, so it's kind of hard to follow what's going on. But we're setting them all up and in their own mental health spaces. And then it's kind of like in horror, what you do is you put a bunch of stuff in a room and then set it off. You put the possessed doll, like in The Conjuring, possessed doll and the music box and you know a few other things and they set those up in the first act they introduce these things and then act two is slowly setting them off and then act three is setting them all off at once that's how you structure it so that's what's happening here is it's almost like a horror film structure they set up all this stuff and then they started to set them off collapsing on the bridge seeing the fight getting beat up and now they're setting it all off at once where we're seeing oh look how happy they are look how together they are and then Look how miserable and, and deeply entrenched in visceral pain they are. Uh, and I'm really, really thrilled to see where that goes. But it's interesting to see sort of their mini beginning, middle, and end, but knowing that, like, these cannot be viewed as singular pieces of art because they, they're, they're bigger than that. They mean something bigger. So, anyway. <laughs> Nice, okay. Ah, the juxtaposition of images. And they're all passing him by. Interesting. Some good acting. So that was fascinating. Again, it was setting up a bunch of stuff and then setting them all off at once. Uh, and the acting throughout was really, really good. You had fight scenes, a lot of anger, a lot of sadness, and it's really easy to overplay that throughout. And they didn't. I mean, they performed for the camera, and it's really easy to just make it a little bit too big for the space. Sometimes that's a mistake actors make. Sometimes it's something directors want actors to do. And so it's they didn't do it. They They kept it subtle and let the the music and the design and everything that was happening kind of project the rest of that emotion onto the space whether it's in the bathtub with the pills taking the pills collapsing dumping the pills in the fire setting i think it was the dollars on fire or maybe it was the petals or maybe both got set on fire and then setting the room on fire you have different people coping with these things in different ways and it's really starting to differentiate the space that all of their characters are in so as a standalone music video, that was a really interesting aspect. And the kind of washed out space that it's in also gives us visually a lot of places to go. It's like looking at a canvas and seeing an outline that's already there. And maybe like the, the grayscale is essentially a sort of a 
this color is going to go here and this color is going to go there. But starting with that washed out not only tells us where the characters are going to go, but it also gives us visually a place to go where it can become more saturated and more heavily colored. So that's a really interesting way to introduce this whole um, universe and plot line that's going to exist. I mean, that's all I really have to say about that. I thought it was great. Um, there may be weeks where I do two videos. Usually, if I'm going to do two, it probably would be one BTS and one non-BTS, but we're going to do BTS on Fridays uh, as a general rule. So just to give you a heads up. And now the, uh, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's going to happen. Listen, I, I have to be honest with you. I don't, I don't think it's necessary to play favorites. What if I just... What if I just love them all? What if I don't have a favorite? You know? I don't I don't think I do. So sorry sorry you waited around. It's Jimin. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Until then, bye.